Now, it's a growing trend. Travelers having their laptops and other electronic devices searched and seized while crossing the border back into the United States. The Constitution Project has even put together some numbers, and according to their figures, from October 1st, 2008 through June 2nd, 2010, more than 6,500 people had their electronic devices searched when crossing the international border. Nearly half of those were U.S. citizens. In 2009, Customs and Border Protection ran 2,204 searches of digital media, including laptops, and 105 individuals were detained without authority citing any grounds for reasonable suspicion. Now, one person who's been a victim of that treatment is computer scientist and activist from the Bradley Manning Support Network, David House. Just weeks ago, he filed a lawsuit against the Department of Justice for violating his First and Fourth Amendment rights by seizing his laptop when he was passing through security at Chicago's O'Hare International Airport. They not only kept his belongings for 49 days, they also interrogated him about his associations with Manning. So joining me to discuss this, give us details on how the lawsuit is going, is David House. David, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Now, for starters, can you give us uh, some more details about that incident at the O'Hare airport that really, um, you know, led you to file a lawsuit? Yeah, of course. It was a really bizarre circumstance. I was coming back in from Mexico on a vacation with my girlfriend, and, uh, you know, you never really expect to have your computer electronics seized from you. So going through the airport, acting completely normally, we got to customs, went through the line, and all of a sudden we were approached by two individuals who said they were from the Department of Homeland Security. And these individuals informed me I was compelled to surrender my electronic devices. Uh, after doing so, they took me to a back room and they interrogated me about my associations with the Bradley Manning Support Network. I should note the support network is a legal advocacy organization based in the states. Uh, it is nothing illegal and it has no affiliations with the WikiLeaks organization. And they seized my computer, uh, I think, and the ACLU believes as well, in order to obtain the information of activists that had donated or supported this legal advocacy campaign. Well, that's one of the things, as you say, that, you know, you go through the airport, you're coming back from a trip, you don't necessarily expect somebody to look through all of your information, but it's something that's happening more and more often if you look at some of the numbers uh, that I just outlined. And it seems like the government really is, takes advantage of the fact that they don't need a warrant when you're on the border. That's one of their rights, because supposedly that's how you keep bad people uh, out of the country. So what are you actually filing suit against? Do you think that you, you have a chance of winning? Well, certainly. Uh, it's important to note that the U.S. government has not been legislated any authority to claim devices at the border. Uh, they have kind of claimed this authority on their own. They said, right, we're the government and we can take your stuff to the border. Uh, there's very little legal precedent for this, and we hope that this case will outline uh, that the U.S. government should actually obtain a warrant before seizing any devices from any person traveling across the border. Now, the border search exception to the Fourth Amendment has been stated uh, to be used in order to protect national defense. But I have a hard time believing that anything on my computer or a list of activists or my chat contacts are somehow detrimental to national defense. So if the U.S. government wants to seize laptops from activists in the future, seize cameras from photo photographers, or seize notes from journalists, they need to get a warrant first, as has been done since the inception of this country. Well, the, these days, of course, we hear national defense or national security being used as an excuse uh, to go after a lot of people. But, okay, you mentioned activists, you mentioned journalists. If it is, let's say, a terrorist organization, do you think that the government should have the right to then seize that information without a warrant? Oh, if it's a terrorist organization, hopefully the U.S. government has the capacity to investigate this organization and then to get a warrant from the courts uh, as is required by due process and law. When we start degrading due process and law, when we start claiming these nebulous exceptions, there's really no end to it. And I don't want to live in a country where my belongings can be seized without a warrant at any time and place. Now, it's important to note the U.S. government has claimed that 50 miles inside each border is actually a constitution-free zone in which they can execute search and seizures for national defense. This means that right now, sitting in my home in Cambridge, Massachusetts, agents could walk in the door and seize my belongings here as well. If we let it go far, there's going to be no stop to it. And the ACLU is putting a firm stance down right now, and I'm supporting them in that. 15 miles from each border. Yeah, there's a lot of people I know that would fall under that category, too, uh, coming from California. Now, I know that the ACLU is behind you. I know that there's also been separate letters written to the Justice Department by a number of former politicians. You have academics as well. You even have, uh, you know, ex-military veterans. Has there been any response from the DOJ yet? 
No response whatsoever. Technically, they have 60 days to respond before we go on to the next step, and they've been remarkably quiet. I will say, however, that we filed several Freedom of Information Act requests trying to figure out what database I'm in that I keep getting stopped at the border after the seizure. And we found that I'm in the government's text database, TECS, which is a treasury information database system used to track people as they travel abroad internationally. Now, this database was used after 9-11 to find uh, suspected terrorists trying to fly back to Saudi Arabia. So the good question is, why is the government using these databases designed to catch terrorists on legal advocates working in the states? And I don't see a good reason for it. If there was a good reason, they would obtain a warrant. And in my mind, this, these exceptions have to be curbed now. Well, that's definitely a, a very good question that you bring up there. And of course, as we know, there is a grand jury being formed in order to try to build a criminal case against WikiLeaks. Uh, we know that Bradley Manning has been detained for over a year, and there are a lot of questions surrounding that. We've been constantly covering that on this show. And so I want to ask you now, uh, pertaining to Bradley Manning, recently, Bradley Manning's father actually said that he thinks you were just using Manning for your own 15 minutes of fame. And he claimed that Manning actually told him that himself, too. What's your response to that? I did see that from the father, and it was very alarming to me because during my last visit to Manning, Bradley asked me that I come back, and he told me that he really enjoyed our conversations. Um, in my mind, it was completely out of the blue. The father's also said that he actually took me off the visitation list. And he said that while also claiming that Bradley had told him or that some other authority had told him. It, to be honest, it's hard really getting a straight answer from the father. What I can say is that him and Bradley did not have a relationship to speak of. And the uh, historical uh, past between Bradley Manning and his father uh, has kind of been whitewashed by his father in the press recently. I don't know if you saw the interview in which his father said that his son, if he committed uh, the crimes he's alleged to have commit, is an effing idiot. And the father also said that he sometimes denies knowing Bradley Manning when asked in public. So the big question is, is this the person really fit to be defending Manning, this individual who kicked him out of the house, this individual who says his son is an idiot publicly? I don't know if that's true, um, but in my mind, I'm just doing what I can to support Manning, and I'll keep doing that despite what the father says. Now, you've been uh, a friend of Bradley's, you've been supporting him, and I'm just curious, as I said, that they're building, there's a grand jury going on in Virginia. We know that there's a criminal case that's trying to be built. We know that uh, people's Twitter accounts have been, uh, you know, um, entered by the government in order to get their information. Have they contacted you? Have you had any kind of subpoena to go uh, to Virginia at all? I have had some recent contact from the U.S. government. I have a meeting with my lawyers tomorrow, uh, and I'll be able to make a more um, robust statement after I get through that meeting with my lawyers. So um, there are some very big developments happening in and around Boston, and hopefully later this week that will all hit the media. Well, actually, uh, I think that's interesting that you mentioned developments around Boston because I also saw in recent uh, interviews of yours that the State Department actually tried to bribe you if you would keep an eye on the hacker scene. Can you tell us more about that? Very interesting, actually. Uh, as soon as the Wired article broke in which Bradley um, and Lameau and the whole situation was kind of laid out, uh, all these federal agents kind of descended on Boston. There was the State Department, there was the FBI, there was Army CID, and they started visiting the uh, less frequent email contacts of Manning, trying to widen the net, and that included myself. So they came to my house, Army CID and State Department, and I had an Army CID official look me in the eye and say, I will offer you a very large cash reward if you'll keep your ear to the ground about WikiLeaks and the Boston hacker scene. And that was a point at which I asked the gentleman to leave because it's one thing for the U.S. government to come to my town and start harassing my friends and start poking around and surveilling all of us. And it's definitely another thing to try to turn us against each other and put us under surveillance after having committed no crime whatsoever. I won't stand for these uh, ham-fisted tactics and no one else should. I don't think, I don't think so. All right, lastly, uh, since you brought it up, turning hackers or people against each other, I just want to know what you thought of that PBS uh, documentary about WikiLeaks and poor Adrian Lama because they really uh, made it seem like the guy really struggled between what to do and uh, whether one was the right thing or the wrong thing. Well, Adrian Lameau is kind of a nobody uh, in this situation. I mean, he is a felon, he's a government informant, and he's someone that we really shouldn't even be giving, giving air time to. His opinions don't really matter in all of this. Um, I would say that what was very interesting is that uh, they tried to embroil uh, the Boston hacker scene uh, into some kind of espionage charge, Frontline did, by running one of Lameau's past um, spin narratives that someone in Boston had actually helped Bradley Manning leak documents. 
And this is an obvious attempt in my mind to uh, further put pressure on Manning activists in Boston and to attempt to intimidate people in Boston from actually speaking up about Bradley Manning. And I can tell you my friends were very alarmed after hearing an unsourced claim on PBS Frontline that we had somehow had something to do with a document leak. It's very alarming and I don't know why PBS Frontline would run these unsourced claims. I'm very disappointed in their, in their team. All right, David, I want to thank you very much for joining us tonight and uh, do keep us updated on how your lawsuit's going. Always a pleasure. Thanks.